Man, I hate dieting. I don't like working out either, because you got to get up off the couch while you're eating stuff you shouldn't be eating. <laughs> so I decided to take the fat blocking pill. Xenical, anyone know about this pill, the fat blocker? Oh, it's the best thing, somebody knows. Best thing in the world. You, you eat anything you want, you take the pill, you lose weight. Woohoo! And it comes with those uh, things. What, are the, what do you call those things it comes with? Um, side effects. <laughs> it comes side effects. And they list them in big letters right on the box. You may experience gas with oily discharge. Yeah. <laughs> for me, that was actually a selling point. Because for my money, nothing says good eating like oily discharge, baby. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry, Bill. Hope you weren't in the line of fire there. <laughs> and those were good ribs, weren't they? Oh, you bet. Worth a pre-soak, you bet your ass. That's one side effect, gas with oily discharge. You may experience increased bowel movements. What the hell? I'm sitting down to pee anyway. If I can handle the increased bowel movements, you may experience sudden bowel movements. Right, as, as opposed to the kind that give you two, three hours notice, you might get that sudden one. And you may experience an inability to control your sudden increased bowel movements. But who cares? You lose weight. I saw a friend of mine the other day, I hadn't seen him about a year. He said, man, look at you. What, what'd you lose? Like what, 20, 22 pounds? I said, you're kidding me, right? You must be joking. Try 31 pounds, brother. 31, count them. Yeah. Yeah, it's a diaper. I wear a diaper now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Poop myself five, six times a day. The rite of passage for 40 year old men is uh, the prostate exam. I had my prostate exam. During the exam, the doctor felt something he wasn't sure of. A second later, he felt something I wasn't sure of. It's probably nothing. I said, oh, okay, good. Let's assume it is nothing. He said, no, it could be something. I said, well, I, one doctor I know thinks it's probably nothing. And he said, oh, who? And I said, you, you jerk. God, I hate doctors. He said, no, it could be something. We better check. I'm going to schedule you for a sigmoidoscopy. And I'm not stupid. If the word oscopy is included, fun won't be on the agenda. So I go in for this test at the Kaiser Medical Center in Los Angeles. The best. Kaiser is the, absolutely the best medical health plan named after the guy who uh, started World War I. Absolutely the best of those that are named after him. Um, so I go in and the guy's checking me in, the, the, the stewardess technician, whatever the hell the guy is. And we're chatting amiably about the procedure. And he says to me, oh, and then the doctor will insert the camera into your rectum. And I said, oh, great. I'm looking forward to that. Well, I hadn't been anything in there since his fingers, so I'm a little itchy. Let's ride! <laughs> Woohoo, cowboy! Then, like an idiot, I get curious, and I said, by the way, how far up does it go? And he says, oh, oh, uh, 65 centimeters? And I said, oh, so two feet, one inch. And he gets all flustered. He says, how do you know that? I said, oh, <laughs> I'm Canadian. <laughs> Never really come in this handy before. <laughs> she told me I'd use this metric system someday. <laughs> and I said, you know, I've been in L.A. 13 years. I've never, never heard the metric system used even once for anything. Why do you use it here? And he said, so we don't have to tell people something's going two feet up their ass. <laughs> ah, point taken. <laughs> But there's always something they don't tell you. And what they don't tell you is while they're doing the exam, which lasts about 12 minutes, uh, in order to keep everything open so they can see it, they're pumping you full of air. And I mean full of air. <laughs> and you have no idea this is happening. So at the end, he pulls her out. <laughs> and, and I'm not a patient anymore. I'm now a time bomb. And he says to me, you know, it was nothing. I was right. You look great. You can get dressed and go home. So I got dressed, and I sauntered down the hallway there. 
past the sick people. Got to the elevator, we're on the 10th floor. Press the button. Elevator came, got in. Pressed one. Doors were about to close, arm came in, lady got on next to me. Going down to one, going down to one. So it was, we, were, we got set to go down. It was just uh, her and me and my colon full of air. <laughs> the trio. The door shut, we started down, and my colon said, you know, let's get rid of this air. We've been holding it like, what, 15 minutes now? Pass the word, we're dumping the air. No, no, alert every, the whole smear, we're dumping it all. And you know, folks, if I can get personal just for a moment. <laughs> it's not that I haven't passed gas loudly <laughs> by accident in an elevator next to a woman before, okay? I have. But I, but I had never experienced, <laughs> and I'm sure she hadn't either. Um, the 10 story continuous fart <laughs> in D sharp minor. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> I, I felt it coming and I knew it was going to be big. But I actually thought maybe I can turn and squeeze it into the mirror here and no one will know. I knew it was gonna be big. Have you ever let one go that's so big you feel like you're losing weight? Right? That's what it felt like. But then, of course, it started, and there was nothing you could do. I mean, it was, once it was literally, you know. to say to her, you know, I just had a sigmoid me, but I was afraid she wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, <laughs> finally, we hit the first floor, the doors opened, she ran, just, whoosh, like she was spring-loaded out of the air, like a streak of flame. And I'm standing there, hey, hey, you forgot your walker. 